Um, so my company is RLD Group. Um, I'm the founder and uh, my background is sort of a crazy path, but all sort of vaguely linear. I started out um, as a technical writer at was what is now called KPMG, but at the time was Pete Marwick, Mitchell and Maine, if anybody's that old. Um, yeah, after that, sure. I worked, what? Yeah, right. you know, okay. I'm not in, I'm not by myself here. Um, okay, and then I worked at Condé Nast as a manager of IT services, which was long ago enough that one of the jobs I had was converting them from typesetting to dual floppy PCs and onward from there. Um, no Macs at the time. Um, so I kind of cut my teeth there in the IT business. And then I left Condé Nast and started a consulting company which specialized in publishing using what I had learned there and taking advantage of the fact that nobody was doing what we were doing at Condé Nast. Um, and I did a variety of other things. Um, my focus had always been on sort of the design side of publishing and I had a business partner who was focused on the editorial side. Uh, we didn't really deal with the ad side of things but we kind of dabbled in that. So then I, um, after many years of doing Madison Technologies and a variety of other things, I moved to San Francisco, which is there's a misspell, but it was called, it is called San Francisco, and uh, for the first dot com, uh, which I think is a term that isn't even used at all anymore, but for the first dot com wave, um, variety of different sort of jobs, which most most notably was principal of a web consulting firm, it was called Luminant. Started out as Interactive Eight, became Luminant. Anyway, after the dot com bust of 2000, it was either sink or swim, uh, stay in San Francisco and do your own thing or leave. Those are the two choices. So I decided to stay and I started my, founded my company, which was called RLD Group and now, or excuse me, Red Letter Day Graphic Design and now is RLD Group. Um, I am the founder and chief everything officer and I really am the chief everything officer. Um, in terms of the services that we now provide, of course, I didn't start out doing all these things. Um, this is sort of in order of how much of this I do, but I kind of love to do all these things. So I do a lot of I do web design and development, primarily in WordPress and Shopify. I still do a lot of print design, which is really my first love, but nobody can make a living as a print designer. So I've accepted that and moved on to doing web, web design. And the web work I do with both design and development. Um, for print, I do everything, whether it's printed or PDF, logos, marketing materials, et cetera, packaging design, trade show graphics, and the fabrication of booths, email design, using MailChimp and Constant Contact, I also get involved in sort of helping people start their businesses as from a technology and design standpoint. I do a lot of form design, um, which, you know, ultimately PDFs, um, fillable PDFs, and also using a tool called Cognito Forms, which is an online form tool. I also do a lot of project management because I'm good at it. So people hire me just to sort of do project management without other deliverables, some process consulting and user acceptance testing for some, some clients. I'm going to jump into my samples because I won't want to run out of time to show these, but I have some other slides after this. So I'm going to super quick. Anybody have any questions so far? Am I talking too fast? Are you all New Yorkers? Okay, good. All right. So um, this is a great client. This client, which is called Halodyne, is really a dream client. Um, so they came, they were an existing client. They actually are ophthalmologists who started this company. Um, and they came to me and they're like, we're starting thinking of doing this thing where we're taking this product that we already use in our ophthalmology practice and packaging it because it helps with COVID. And so I said, I'll do that. You know, I can do everything. And they already, this was a an interesting thing because they already knew me. So in this case, this client didn't even have a company name or URL, nothing when they came to me, which was about a year and three months ago at the beginning of the pandemic. So what you see here on, on the site is the result of many different pieces of the puzzle that I've put, done for them. Everything from the site, of course, logo, packaging, um, setting up their Zen desk, setting up their email, helping with the videos, finding a person to shoot the videos and so on. Everything on the site. I didn't actually do the videos myself because I don't do that, but you know, always just kind of being the person to connect my clients with the resources that they need. Um, so I've done all the packaging design. These, some of these are real. I mean, they're all real products. Some of these are, this is a render, this one here, the oral rinse, and some of these are actual photos. Um, you know, setting up their social, um, the, pro, the, the, pay, the site is pretty simple. Um, it's meant to be simple. It's a, you know, kind of a consumer focused uh, site. I did all, I've done all the drug facts on the packaging and everything. And then originally we were doing it in, in um, WooCommerce, which is the, the uh, e-commerce plugin for, for WordPress. But their products are very expensive. And I started to literally have nightmares that they were going to be calling me at two o'clock in the morning because the site was down and they were selling, losing out on $35,000 worth of sales. 
So I, I suggested to my client that we switch to Shopify. He was fine with that. He already had experience at Shopify. And so now the shop is separate um, and it's in Shopify. It's meant to look relatively seamless. It's not exact. It's kind of complicated to make it exact, but it's meant to look like it's part of the site. So you can see it has the same navigation. And this is a live site. You can buy the products, um, choose different, um, you know, different different pack size and everything. And I've done everything. I manage the site. I, I sort of write the content. I mean, I don't literally write the content, but my client will give me, he, my client happens to be, the, the marketing person happens to be a writer, but I set up, you know, he's like, how do we do uh, reviews? So I set up a review um, plugin and how do you do it? How do you sell on Amazon? I set up the Amazon app and everything. So it just comes to me and I help him with whatever he needs. Um, and then, um, Oh, that's a shop. So then I also help them with their MailChimp campaigns. This is a MailChimp template that we did a long time ago, which points directly to the um, the shop. And they do a lot of, I set up the original template. They create the <coughs> recurring template. Um, then, as I mentioned, I did all the packaging. So you can see that these are different renders of different packages that we're working on. I don't do the actual renders. So here I outsourced the actual rendering of the products because that requires specialized skills, specialized um, hardware and so on. But I designed the package um, and then I send the die lines to a renderer. This person happens to be in the Ukraine, does an amazing job. And he comes back with these really looks completely real. This is just done from, a, from an Illustrator file. And then it's eventually produced for real. Um, and brochures, you know, and it that kind of goes on. So this is the brochures that I do using the existing products, charts, graphs, you know, everything. Um, a lot of stuff in their case happens in uh, Spanish. So this is everything that's been translated from English to Spanish. I do tend to work with clients who have multilingual requirements. They speak some French, some Spanish and some other languages. So I'm able to sort of help with that kind of stuff because I'm familiar with how things are supposed to work. I don't do the translations, but I do check them actually to make sure that they're correct. Um, sorry, whoops, get out of that node there. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Um, so here's just a, this is what the packaging looks like when I design it. So I'm given a die line by the, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Just ignore that. How do you, how do we silence all of these things when we're doing presentation? Um, this is uh, the die line that I'm given from the from the uh, printer, excuse me, and more renders. So this is what I've done for this client. So everything really from soup to nuts. He calls me, I need it done, I take care of it, set up Zendesk, set up a, whatever it's that, you know, set up your Gmail and that kind of stuff. Ideal client, love working with them. Um, they're also just, just great people to work with. So it's really my favorite type of thing to do. Then I have clients that are smaller companies. So this is a, an antiques buyer. I've been working with him for years. This is actually the current version of the site and now we're redoing the site to be a little bit more updated. Um, so I've done everything for him except for the photography, but even in this case, I found the photographer to do the photography. So it's everything you can see. And this is an SEO. This site is really about SEO. I don't do the SEO. He has a consultant that does the SEO, but everything here is about getting traffic to the site. There's tons of blog posts. He sends me the content every month. I do the blog posts, I find the images um and so on so right now we're doing a revise of this which is just going to make the site sort of wider and a little bit more this is already responsive but more responsive more modern so this site is probably four or five years old at this point but it still looks really great i think considering how old it is um another client of mine which is called the main idea um she writes these um educational abstracts so we have this the five is minute a, mark sharon by the way if, um but if anybody wants to chime in or if you want to, you know, continue or switch to um, uh, Q and A, whatever you'd like, just let you know. I'll do that. Two more minutes, I'll switch to Q and A. Um, so this site is really interesting because this is a very. It looks doesn't look like it. A completely customized WordPress site. It's everything from content 
to a, Wor a WooCommerce um, part where she, people can subscribe to her newsletters that she writes, to a, res a resource to re um, search for existing content. This is all a big giant database with you can search for different type of content. So I basically done this site. It's, it's pretty uh, totally customized, but still WordPress, still up to date. Um, and still, you know, something that she makes, you know, a decent amount of money from. Just to go quickly about some project management stuff. This is a client that I've done for St. Ives, which is part of Unilever. Um, just do these huge project management projects for them, keeping track of everything, deliverables, um, FICO World, which is a big conference, all the different deliverables, the size, when things are due, who's done them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of that. Um, I talked about Kahala 9 already. You can see all the different things I've done. My clients, like I said, really range. Small clients like Kahala 9 and Silly and Main Idea, medium-sized clients like Promise Technologies, and then big companies. And they're all good clients. I really don't have like a strong preference for working with a startup or a big company. They all come with baggage. They all come with pluses and minuses. Um, like purchase orders and things like that, that big companies require or smaller companies that don't pay on time and things like that. So it really is all, all different uh, parts of the same thing. The differentiators that I have for my company is that my, I am hyper client service focused. Um, I really, my clients are my priority. I would say, as everyone would say about their clients, but I think it's, I'm exceptional in that way. My clients would always say that, oh, Sharon just has one client, which is not true, of course, that nobody can run a business like that, but that's really what I'm aiming for. Obviously the breadth of services I provide, the people are dealing directly with me. I do outsource some of my work, but most of it I do myself. But even if they're out, if I've outsourced like the, the rendering of those boxes, my clients, they know that I've outsourced it, but they're still dealing directly with me. I pick up the phone, I answer emails quickly. I'm kind of always available. I try to sort of pretend that I'm 24 seven. Obviously I don't really work 24 seven. I'm resourceful, I'm the go-to gal, and I never say no. I always have room for my clients' work. I don't always say no to new clients if I'm too busy, but I never say no to existing clients. I'll always make time for them. And that's it, that's my presentation. Um, and now I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, I know I speak very quickly as I disclosed in the beginning, so hopefully everybody got all of what I said and I'm happy to answer any questions, so. Yeah, I totally do. That's, that's awesome. And I, I appreciate the quick talk because I can talk pretty quick myself sometimes. <laughs> uh, um, so did you um, generally charge on like a, a per project or per service basis? Or is it just kind of a retainer that kind of somebody comes to you and says, here's a bunch of money, just do a bunch of stuff for me? Well, I'd like to get that second version of clients, but most clients do, of course, want, you know, a proposal of some sort. It, I would say that Almost always my initial engagements with my newer, you know, with new clients require a proposal. I used to joke uh, when I was in BNI, people would say, how much it costs? Well, I was like, well, it takes 10 hours and my rate is X, it's X times 10. So it's not like I'm just coming up with some random number. It's obviously based on how many hours I think it's going to take at my rate equals X. I do try to stick with my initial um, uh uh, estimates because that's why people ask me for a proposal. I am fairly good about keeping people in scope. If it goes out of scope, then I'll say, listen, we didn't talk about 30 pages. We only talked about 10 pages and so on and so forth. As the relationship evolves, um, oftentimes I will just bill my clients for the work that I've done at the end of the month because they've obviously trust that I build fairly and, you know, and uh, correctly. So it, it, it often follows that path. Some clients, Absolutely ask, I have one client who literally wants to know what everything's going to cost before we start anything, even if it's four or five hours, and that's fine. So we, we have a Google sheet that I say, I'm going to do these five things. Each one's going to take an hour. Therefore, my time will be, she doesn't have to, I don't have to tell them it's going to cost, but I do tell her it's going to take five hours. And if it takes six, that's on me. <coughs> if she changes, you know, that's on her. So yeah, so both, but mostly I have some retainer clients, but mostly it's on a per project or ongoing relationship kind of trust really, uh, basis. Awesome. Um, hi, Sharon. I'm sorry I'm late for the meeting. You know, there's a agency out of Kansas City that's up for sale right now that is, it seems like maybe a decent fit because you're doing the product stuff. Are you also handling any of the advertising side of it? Like the no, placements? Like you don't do any of that stuff. Um, more than half of their revenue is just from production work which seems to be like the kind of stuff you're describing. I was thinking mm -hmm. just to make an intro to you because it's not a good fit for me. 
And sure, uh, I don't know if you're looking to acquire anybody, but um, that's all. Yeah, thank you. It was a new opportunity. I need your email though. I don't have it. So we put it in that. Yeah, look look under RDL group on the on the website, but you could also put it in the um, in the site. It's RLD RDL. group, not RDL. RLD group, by the way. It's Sharon sure. at RLD. Any, it's actually anything at RLD group. <laughs> yeah, just put it in the chat. I'll copy it. <laughs> so you can just pick your at RLD group uh, beginning, and it's also Sharon Shanzer Gmail, just to keep things simple. Um, yeah. And I think I said, oh, yeah, I've been in business 20 years. I talked about all that stuff. So um, yeah, I'm you happy did. to be part of this. It's totally fun. Great to have you. And yeah, Sharon, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out on uh, on LinkedIn. Let's have a chat with you about uh, okay. a possible collaboration. Great, excellent. Wonderful. Um, okay, so it's a small group. Um, Jason, thank you for joining, even if you came in a little bit late. I think. Um, uh, Audrey did say that she had to get on a call, so she may pop back in. I think she didn't want to hang out uh, on the Zoom. Um, but uh, let's see, in terms of the order in which people showed up, I will put that in the chat um, for everyone. So we'll go Bryce, Howard, Scott, Audrey, if she comes back, then Jason, then me. Um, and, you know, we got time. I'll put it at two minutes. But if you want to use, I'll put it at three minutes. If you don't want to use it all, no problem. Um, Bryce, go for it. Um, hi, everybody. So my name is Bryce Wade. I am the Google Cowboy is my moniker. Um, VP of sales for my new marketer, obviously. Um, and uh, we've had a, a really great um, first quarter. Um, Michael and some of the other people I've gotten connected to have introduced me to a number of really large clients for our product, Ad Cannibal which basically saves large companies um, a, a very significant amount of money on their ad spend for Google, uh, Google SEM. Um, so that's been a really fantastic um, product for us. Uh, my business partner just connected with another uh, marketing guy that's really high up there at some other marketing company. Um, and he's going to connect us to Disney and Procter and Gamble next week. So uh, be, be some really good meetings in the, in the, in the coming weeks. So the, 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 uh, the agency is going to go from six figures to eight in uh, in short order, <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> um, so we're we, we've been typically uh, an SEO and organic focused um, company for for quite a while. Um, this um, product that I just described basically is our enterprise level uh, product that we're focused on, and it's my personal focus right now too, as it's uh, insanely lucrative um, because of the numbers that, that Google deals with. You know they make hundred billion dollars a year uh, off of AdWords and we can probably take about 10% of that roughly for um, with this product. Um, so pretty happy about that. Um, I don't have a lot to say today. This is kind of an overview. Um, so I, I see my time. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just add that um, uh, we have an agreement with the mind of a marketer. If anybody brings in a lead um, for that results in a sale, um, there's a commission uh, that gets uh, that gets paid out to that person, um, and I, I I think in the last two um, newsletters or updates I had mentioned that uh, in that update. Um, yeah. But if you have uh, so today we had a call. Oops, we had a call with a big cosmetics company um, that I connected Bryce with, and they claim to be the fifth largest spender on Google um, for Google Ads in the world. Um, obviously, if we can save them, you know, five, ten percent of their spend, uh, it'd be a significant savings. Okay. Um, so after Bryce was Howard, Howard, you're up. All righty. I'm gonna do a screen share. Oh, absolutely. All right. Yeah. All right. Can you see that? We can. All right, great. I was going to, uh, you know, we specialize in organizational transformations, uh, helping with uh, branding, marketing, and fundraising, but I wanted to use the time today to give you a tip, um, and it's on a perspective called action design. Um, so I'm going to kind of start with uh, before from another organization, but basically it's a brochure that doesn't really speak to you, and you probably encounter these kinds of things all the time. It happens to be professional development for teachers, and I use this one because the client I'm going to show you is also professional development for teachers. They have a methodology that helps teachers to improve their ability to identify students' needs 
and be more effective teachers. And when they approached us, they're called hidden sparks. When they approached us, they were looking to evolve from this one-on-one -on -one coaching to a five-year service model. Um, and they were really, they really wanted to talk about their um, program in detail. And we said, you really can't do that. You have to engage your customers, the teachers, you know, in some way. So, you know, we created this die cup brochure. It says inside every child is a hidden spark and you open it up and says, we help you find it. And then we use the example inside of putting ourselves in the role of the teacher and say, there's a student who has a reading problem and is struggling, you know, what do you do? Um, and we empathize with their frustration. And we said, what do you do? And we give options um, that the teacher might face. And this is a die cut window. I don't um, see, I don't think anything I don't think you're moving. sharing what you're trying to do. You're not seeing any of this? No. Uh, we only see the front page, which is organizational transformations. Oh, that's not good. There's a couple on my time now. <laughs> that's all right. Um, you want to try it again? Yeah. All it right. just did, gonna, it wasn't clicking through for some reason. Yeah, there's like a problem with, all right, I'm not gonna do the full screen. For some reason, I don't know. We'll, we'll uh, try now. All right, I'll Will do- we see the screen, just scroll down. Yeah, let me see, do you- We see the organizational okay. transformation. You see something now saying action design? No. 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 Uh, just oh, organizational transformation. Is, is it? it is, it's a PDF, you can scroll, right, or now? Yeah, yeah, all right, stop sharing. All right, let me- There we go. Oh, it's the action perfect. design now, yep. Uh, all right, all right, so here's, all right. What I was trying to say was <laughs> most brochures <laughs> are really static. They, they may be well-designed, but they don't speak to you in any way whatsoever. Um, and you really have to do that. So in helping this organization to evolve their message, they, like most groups, you want, they want to talk about what they have to offer. And they invested so much in a learning methodology for teachers. They're like, tell us, tell them all about this, you know, this great learning lenses that we have. Um, and we said, you really can't focus on all that. You got to just engage your customer. And so, uh, you know, the teacher. And so we created this brochure, the die cut cover says inside every child is a hidden spark. You know, we help you find it. And so hopefully that engages them. And then what we did was we created the scenario that the teacher would face about a struggling student. We empathize with her frustration, the teacher's frustration. We present options for the teacher to take, all of which they might face in a normal situation and none of them are really ideal and then and then we say there's a better way you know using the learning lenses they identified his learning profile and they they identified the the challenge and were, were able to help him essentially and so the teacher is able to actually experience the benefit as if she was in the classroom rather than talking about the idea in abstract and so um the, here, if you want to take a screenshot, this, this is kind of the takeaways are you really have to see things through your customer's eyes. You know, they're, what, are they, what are they face? their challenges they're facing, what options, you know, they have, um, what they're experiencing emotionally, even for business buyers. Um, help them visualize the experience of your service, not just telling them, talking at them, but actually help them experience before they buy it as much as possible, um, including that emotional um transformation that, that's, that would happen through them. And you could use things like die cuts and questions and quizzes and contrasts and before and after. And, you know, it's not um, expensive to do any of those things. It's knowing the right way to just see things through your, your customer's eyes and engage them in a way that's going to be meaningful to them. That's so cool. That's great. You Did you think about, uh, you, you sort of want to press the, you know, fill in the dots of the question, little survey thing and see what happens. Oh, if it's online, it's, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we did, you know, I mean, online we've done stuff like that where we've dramatized and we have, we had a quiz for the U.S. Navy. We're raising money for the CBs, the construction brigade. And so we gave scenarios, you know, how do you string, you know, they had to string electric through the jungle, but the circuits didn't come in. What do you do? And you click on the things and it shows them using glass Coke bottles, you know, and it so show off their ingenuity. Uh, so, so yeah, online, you could definitely, you definitely do that. I wonder if in that case, you put a QR code, if you really want to do this, you can just open it up on your phone. Yeah, sure. sure. All right. Thank you. I mean, we, you went, we, we gave you a little more time than usual, but it was fascinating. Thank you. Good. Thanks for that. Uh, okay. Uh, Scott, uh, then Audrey, if she comes back, Scott, you're up. 
Okay, thanks very much, Howard, uh, Michael. And Howard, that was very, very helpful. And Sharon, I really appreciated your presentation as well. And you should probably come and fix mine. Um, uh, Michael, with your permission, can I share my screen and show a sure. couple of pictures? Sure, absolutely. All right, thank you. Um, do I hit it or do you hit it? Uh, I, you can hit it, you hit share screen, it's already available. Okay. Um, and then you select the window that is the screen you want to share the application. Um, I have to open system preferences. This is ridiculous. Um, so take a moment. Okay. Can everybody see those pictures? No, nope, you have to uh, share this. You haven't shared it. Oh. Hit the green share screen and then pick the uh, the window you want to share. Okay. All right. What you're looking at is, do you see these pictures of the cars? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, I, I'm sort of like some ways like Sharon, the Swiss Army and others here, the Swiss Army knife of marketing after a 40 year career in the business. So I do work with advertising challenges. Uh, I write blogs for Toolcase, an AI company. I do a lot of other things, but my principal work is partnerships and alliances for a nonprofit providing knowledge, tools, and support for minority entrepreneurs, especially those suffering from the COVID economic calamity. An example of the partnerships and alliances that we enter into, this is one that we just announced yesterday with Richard Petty Motorcars, uh, Motorsport. They're going to be running this car in three races and we'll have an associate sponsorship. Um, I don't want to offend anybody here of color, but uh, if there is anybody of color on the call, but this might be relieving Richard Petty's guilt trip from the 50s and 60s when these good old boys started NASCAR, but we don't care. The fact is we're going to get tremendous visibility. We have a grant application from the NBA right now. And another example is what we're doing with Hustle Mommies. So Hustle Mommies is 75,000 women around the country who have become entrepreneurs, some of them from the get-go, some after losing their job and finding out that, you know, there's no other choice but to be, a, uh, you know, working in the kitchen or starting a restaurant. So um, the kinds of companies we have, I just signed one of the two largest air courier shipping companies in the country for supplier diversity. And we're working across all the different challenges with Fortune 500s, Fortune 1000s, um, even private equity and uh, lawyer for uh, you know attorneys and uh, and and all kinds of different service professionals. So that's just really a quick summary. It's a little different than what I've said in the past, Michael, as you know. Um, but I just thought it'd be interesting for people to see this. Any leads, we do pay referrals. Uh, if somebody thinks they know a company that wants to show their support for diversity, equity, inclusion, or advance economic equity for minority entrepreneurs. We do this for Latinx, we do this for women, we do this for NB Native Americans and LBGTQ as well. We, we, we customize the content of the platform and the community that we operate to provide knowledge, tools, and support for entrepreneurs. Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, I'm just putting in chat, um, and congratulations, by the way, on that new uh, partnership. That's great. Well, it's only one or two companies, so uh, you know. That's that's a that's a start. It's got it's got to start somewhere. Um, and remind me to connect you with Kelly Campbell, um, who has just launched a a speakers bureau uh, focused on uh, conscience conscience leadership. I think she calls it. Yeah, but wow. but. Um, D and I, um, diversity, diversity and inclusion. equity, and inclusion. Oh, D E I, okay. D E and I. D E and I is or one. D E I. Of, right, is one of her areas of. of I mean, everybody's doing it. Like Madison Square Garden just hired a guy named uh, Richard Constable not long ago as a C-suite executive, and uh, th this is going on all over the country now. Whether it's going to turn out to be a the, the positive results that everybody wants or just a, a a fad, I don't know. But you know, we'll see. Oh, by the way, and I should have said this at the beginning. Um, uh, you, uh, Scott, thank you. Uh, last week you were on and you gave me a nice little plug or the the TRN a nice little plug, and I I captured it. 
I made it into a little testimonial and I sent it to you, but I need your approval to use it. Um, oh, I didn't see it. Yeah, so it was it was probably look in your emails. I can always send it to you again. Um, I didn't I didn't change any of your words. It's basically just a snippet of our call. Um, so, uh, yeah. you know, please send it again because okay. I've gotten a number of. Was this a um, like an embedded MP4 file? No, no, no. I sent you a link. I sent you a link okay. to it on YouTube. I did get a link on YouTube, and I I wasn't sure if it was legit or not, so I think I deleted it. Okay, I'll reset. Thank you. It's for me, it's legit. <laughs> yeah, no, but I've been getting all kinds of spam. Maybe everybody else has too. I don't know. There's something going on out there. Okay. Um, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And I'm going to switch back to gallery view because for some reason I don't show up on, um, on speaker view when I speak as the host. Um, so I'll give myself three minutes. Thanks everybody for joining. Um, of course, you all know who I am. Um, my company, Software Development Resources, is a rep firm for software development teams. Um, so uh, I had an interesting experience uh, just a couple of days ago. I was referred, uh, somebody was referred to me. It's a startup, uh, a woman uh, who is in the fashion world and she works with some high-end stylists and they have an idea. They don't have the funding yet. They want to build sort of a marketplace uh, for clothing where where the recommendations are based on uh, this algorithm that they've created for matching people with their color, their style, et cetera. Um, and I do this a lot with startups. Um, I dissuade them from spending money in the wrong way, <laughs> even if they want to build a website, right? I was helping her decide, you know, where do you want to spend your money? Do you want to build a marketplace, which anybody can do? Or do you really want to prove out your, your concept of, you know, the value associated with this capability of the style recommendation engine. Um, so she's going back to her team and they're going to discuss how do we do this and maybe make this a, a service that's available to stylists to prove that it does work and people are willing to pay for a, you know, a style recommendation engine as opposed to building an entire ecosystem, including a marketplace where you have different vendors, which gets very complex, as you can well imagine. Um, so part of my job is, is, uh, being a consultant to my clients, um, and helping them sort of figure out, especially if they're a startup, what they should really focus on. Um, had another client we just won, which is great, um, who wants to do a speakers bureau for, uh, and she's going, she's launching the speakers bureau for, um, uh, people of color in particular, women and people of color in the medical field who have you know, really deep expertise in different areas, but they don't get the same exposure because they just don't have you know, books out there or whatever else. Um, but um, they, you know, so they are gathering these, these medical experts and making them available to a broader audience. And of course, they're starting with topics that are relevant like COVID. Um, and, and things that are in the news so that there's demand for what they're doing. Um, she actually was doing this sort of as a volunteer uh, over the past year, and she realized that you know, this, there's a, a real uh, potential business here. And my job with her was to help her sort of figure out how she can scale this down and launch it with what is really different and what's going to, what's going to uh, stand out in the marketplace for her. Um, and then we move on to, okay, let's develop it. Let's, let's um, scope it out uh, and, then, and then we'll build it for you. Um, and then of course I do a lot of work with, uh, with marketing agencies um, who don't always have those internal resources, programming resources um, to, to build the site themselves. Or in some cases um, we are supplementing their own internal programming capabilities. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, oh, Jason, I forgot you. How did okay. I do that? We have time. I'm going to go we quick. Have, we have plenty of time. You don't have to go quick. All right. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something different than what I've done before. Give me one second. I'm going to show you guys something since it's a small group that is a hack that I have going on. Let me just find it. Hold on. Where the hell is it? 
Oh, it's so crazy. It doesn't come up. Okay, so let me share my screen. So Absolutely. I've been, let's share a screen. Okay, so I'm going to just show you a hack on LinkedIn because it's been working. So I did this post this morning at nine o'clock and it already has um, 2,500 views. Wow. This morning, okay. Um, and I got 36 votes on my poll, which is very good. This one was done at 12 o'clock. I did a podcast yesterday for about 45 minutes on uh, the cybersecurity firm. And this is up to almost a thousand views in less than three hours. Okay. And then I have, um, I, I could look for it, but bottom line is, let's see if it's on here. Uh, no, it keeps showing the, the stuff from today. So I did a couple of posts last week and one of them hit like 8,000 views, another hit 4,000. So the source of that is this. Give me a second. This. If you, I'll put it in the chat if I could find it. Where the hell is it? There we go. I lost the chat. I'll figure it out. Um, that's very strange. Where the hell is the chat? Oh, I know. That's why I'm sharing. That's what the problem is. <laughs> okay. So um, chat's still there. It's just up the top. No, no, no. I, I couldn't find it. Okay, fine. So I wanted to show you that. That's one thing. So this thing is called Velocity Jam. And what happens is when you post, and I'm trying to figure out now if we can replicate this in Facebook and in Instagram. So when you post in LinkedIn, you have two hours to get 15 comments on your post in order to break through the barrier of your of LinkedIn's algorithm. Because if you have a thousand followers, let's say, only six to eight percent see your post. Once you succeed to get 15 comments on your thing and you look active, so you leave 15 comments on other people's posts, this velocity jam, they they created a network effect where they give you 15 posts to comment on and they give 15 people your post all within two hours. And you can see the numbers, it's all legitimate. The only thing that is not legit are the comments that you're getting in that first two hours, 15 of them are gonna be bullshit comments, but their purpose is to move you through the, to move you beyond that first barrier. So this stuff is really working and right now, on LinkedIn, surveys is by far the most uh, powerful thing you can do in a post. More than a video, more than a, um, a, a good image, even a, an animated GIF, that my surveys are just ridiculous the amount of response I'm getting. So that's one thing. The second thing I wanted to show you is um, related to the e-commerce platform. So we just put this up a couple of days ago. I'll share a screen again. This is, so I've talked a little bit about the e-commerce platform, but now I have an image to show you. So I'll share again. So Adricom is the platform. It's a combination of commerce, content, and community all integrated. So it's got, like when you described the thing you were talking about, Michael, like the Adricom system probably can handle a lot of the things that are coming your way uh, because it has all the WordPress stuff for content. It's got all the Shopify and Magento commerce stuff. And then it has the community stuff, business directories, comments, fans, all that kind of stuff. It's all integrated. So now we just put out this, we're doing a lot of content development there. So at the top part, that's what the world looks like now. People have Shopify, they have WooCommerce, they have custom config Magento. And on the bottom, is all integrated one platform. So this is sort of like a new thing. No one's seen this yet. The blog just got posted, I think yesterday. You, uh, can you zoom in a little bit? It's hard to read. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'll put the link up. But on the diagram, is, yeah. Yeah, here. Stuff. Hold on, there you go. So you can see it's like, I mean, does this graphic mean anything? Not really, but it's just a, a way of, of creating an environment in one graphic to show that we, we just going live right now with a guy who has seven warehouses, sells a fitness equipment, and he's moving inventory between the warehouses. He's taking purchase orders. He's taking online sales. He's got stuff coming in from China. And uh, there's just so much stuff under one roof now. So ERP is starting to be integrated. 
uh, lead CRM. It's all integrated. So it's one ridiculous platform. And uh, we're raising right now, they're having meetings for an investment. So that's going to enable us to do marketing. All this stuff has been referral based. So if anyone comes to you, bottom line, with a project that is not out of the box, like Shopify is good for, this is a really robust system that's worth talking about. And the speed to delivery is one third the time of another platform, besides the cost being significantly less. Like this fitness guy, we deployed him for like 30 grand. And he said the cheapest quote he got was 75 grand in six months. And we did the thing in two months. I mean, it's taking longer to go live, but not because of development. It's just taking him time to load inventory, you know, stupid things, get his merchant account in place. But the actual so, development was two months. So, so. are you saying this is like an all-in-one platform for every yeah. aspect of most businesses? No, yeah. e but the e-commerce core is, is the- is the Yeah, e-commerce is the core, but I mean, right. there's even like a site running out of Russia. They have a, a database of 3 million people that were killed by Stalin. And you, this came out of Germany, they did from the Holocaust also. So there's a global map and you can look up someone and see where they were, like flags on a map to track them mm -hmm. down if you're looking like for ancestors or things like that. And that's running on here. No different than a, a company who sells subscriptions to workers' uh, uh, employment laws around the world, like Disney as a client or Exxon. All the subscriptions, all the data is handled inside the platform. So it's not just pure e-commerce. It's just- It's, it's data management, ERP. Everything, right. And wow, so that's pretty crazy. You're right. And the newest thing is purchase order management, which is actually a big weak point in the marketplace, because uh, what happens now is like I we run a business for another company and they deal with purchase orders with the NIH. And so what happens is the purchase order systems like Ariba, they generate the PDF to place the purchase order, then it's lost to the system. It's completely yeah. lost. Then they require the, the people at NIH to call to follow up. Where's my order? Stuff like that. Here, it's all integrated. Right. And e-commerce was not originally built for B2B. It was more for, right. you know, put your credit card in. You know, yeah. we don't take purchase orders. And uh, different than Shopify, like there's no templating system. Everything is custom built. I mean, I would say the ideal client, and I'll be done with this, is if somebody wants to run their business and have a webmaster, we're not the right fit. This is more, you say to yourself, I don't really want to spend 10 grand a month on a webmaster and a team to go with that. I, I don't want to be in the technology business. I want to run my business. So it seems most of the clients that, that Adricom are servicing are, are companies that don't want to have a fully loaded e-commerce division. They want to outsource the entire process and, and they just want to download their orders. Sort of wow. like that. On top of custom stuff, which you just can't do easily in Shopify or Magento. So that's what I wanted to share. Different than my normal agency stuff. That's all right. Thank how you. are you connected to them? Say so I'm an original investor in the company. Oh, cool. Cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. And uh, sorry for almost and actually, skipping yeah. you. Yeah, I'm done. Um, all right, good. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sharon, for joining. Um, if anybody, of course, has anybody they want to recommend, um, for the group, please let me know if anybody wants to do a, a showcase. We do have spaces uh, available after next week. Um, and um, if anybody, I'm, I'm right now spending time working on the next version of the website, which will be a lot more functional. You'll be able to search um, members. Uh, the structure will be a little bit different, more robust. Uh, and uh, as I said, we'll be promoting the meetings uh, more broadly to uh, to get people in as guests. Um, and if you want to bring in a guest, that's fine too. Just let me, I, I think it's best if you just introduce them to me and I can, I can talk to them.